Irish football fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here with none other than former Republic of Ireland international and current West Brom player, none other than Wes Houlihan. Uh, firstly, Wes, lovely to have you here. Thanks for your time. Oh, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Um, so you're over here. Essentially, you're promoting your new academy. When is it launching? And what, um, what is it? We're about? going to launch it in January. You know, um, hopefully in the north side, uh, with Bet Star with Belvedere, and then obviously taking over to the south side. Um, you know, obviously something I wanted to give back to the community. You know, of, uh, growing up in the inner city, and uh, it's always something I always uh, wanted to do. You know, it's the next uh, venture in my uh, career. That's nice that you want to give back uh, to your roots. You know, you started your career at Belvedere, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so what kind of calibre are you, are you looking to get into your academy? Uh, all ages, uh, boys and girls, you know, um, just to go out there, enjoy themselves, have fun. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a great um, academy and hopefully, you know, um, start off in uh, the north side and then head over to the south side and uh, open up Perfect. the academy. And you guys are actually starting up a uh, social media now, which I'll leave in the, in the bio, so don't worry about that. And you will go and follow, for sure. Uh, so are you, are you looking... Are you obviously in kind of the Belvedere area, but is there any other areas you'd be looking to kind of open up after that? Or just yeah, of course. Up? Obviously, I um, started off in the north inner city and then um, move over to the, the south side and uh, open up another venue over there. So what, what would be your message to any kids looking to get involved in Wes Hoolan Football Academy? Yeah, just to, you know, enjoy themselves, you know, have fun. It's going to be um, a great atmosphere, you know, we have uh, the best of coaches and, uh, you know, just to enjoy themselves. So are you going to be involved in this? Would be something that you kind of be attending and stuff like that? Yeah, obviously, yeah, something I want to get involved in, you know, I want to give back to the community, you know, um, you know, when it's on, I'll be there and, uh, you know, uh, helping the kids out and uh, coaching them as much as I can and uh, showing them what I've done over the years and, you know, kind of street football when I was growing up and um, hopefully, you know, that, that will work out great. Brilliant, brilliant. What would be your voice to someone who's looking to make it as a pro now? Maybe they might be start maybe your academy or something like that. What would be your advice to them? Um, I just think, you know, growing up when I play, you know, I was always practicing all the time, you know, um, just keep focused, uh, keep working hard, um, you know, enjoy as much as you can and um, just go out there and just do your best. In terms of your, your own career, like, you know, you obviously went to England quite young, young on trials. Um, what was that like for you and then how did that kind of mould you as a player? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was 16 I went over to um, a couple of teams in England on trial and um, didn't quite settle in or didn't, you know, I, I did enjoy it but I didn't settle in and then uh, Mick Neville took me out of Shelbourne and, um, you know, worked my way up through the through the league, you know, we kind of had to grow up straight away because it, it was a tough league, a lot of men in it and I uh, really enjoyed it, you know, playing Champions League football you know, winning League League of Ireland medals, so it was a great experience to do that. And then, um, obviously, at a later age of my career, I went across the, the water. Yeah. And you obviously mentioned Champions League, um, that game at, at Lansdowne, and obviously in uh, the Riazor, I think it's called. Yeah, it um, is, yeah. Versus Deportivo. What was that like for you? And you know, I talked to, a, I've actually spoke to a, a good few players of your former teammates, like I think Owen Heary and Jason Byrne, uh, Glenn Fitzpatrick, and they all said like on the day that well, both games that you stood out. Yeah, it was a, a great occasion, you know, to play against one of the best teams in Europe at the time. Um, you know, we were probably disappointed we didn't have in Talca Park, you know, because the intimidation put them there. But uh, when I was moved to Lansdowne Road, and then when you, you ran out on the pitch, yeah, it was an amazing experience, you know, uh, a great crowd was there. And obviously to test yourself against uh, one of the best teams in Europe, it, it, was, a, it was a great day. So you went, you went from uh, Shells down to Livingston? And then from Livingston to Blackpool, it was, it went Blackpool on loan, wasn't it? Went and then Blackpool from Livingston to Blackpool on loan for a year, and then went to a permanent then to for Blackpool for a year, and then obviously then moved over to, to Norwich. Then yeah, became a hero at Norwich as well. Yeah. Um, but at, in terms of your your Irish international career, like you were often described, and many people still to this day, you know, say that you're our best creative midfielder and like a rare talent. Did you ever feel like you were overlooked as a player? Um, no, not at the time. You know, when you're you're playing, you just want to play. For, you know, to wear the the badge and walk out onto, onto the pitch is a great uh, occasion, and I really enjoyed it. You know, obviously, you know, I would have loved to play more times from a country, but uh, I never thought I was overlooked. You know, Martin gave me, you know. He, Captain me the most times and they uh, really really uh, had a successful spell under him so no I didn't feel I was overlooked you know I'd love them to play more games but you know to play as many times as I did for my country I'm very proud of that. Brilliant, brilliant. So you, you spoke of Martin there and um, the Euros it seemed to be a, 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 a you know it was 
huge stage obviously for us uh, I'm sure you would have seen a lot of the, the you know the fans and social media and stuff like that all the you know the, the buzz and stuff like that but that was a great tournament for you personally wasn't it yeah it was a great great time you know um, to play the first game in the Euros and uh, you know to, to draw one all against Sweden and obviously get the goal and it was a great cross for Seamus but to, you know to have that experience in front of 90,000 fans you know is one thing I'll never forget yeah, you could you could see it in your face from the celebration. I mean, I, I still watch it back. Like it was like that, giving it loads. Like it's brilliant. It's amazing to see. And you know, and it wasn't even your good foot. No, it was, yeah. But you'll say you say you don't have a bad foot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a swinger. Uh, lucky enough, it went in the back of the net. You know, I probably tried that about ten times and well, I go into the stands. But uh, you know, that day I fell in the back of the net, and uh, you know, the rest uh, it was amazing. You know. Yeah, but it was actually one of them. Was kind of ball was kind of coming back. You kind of had to knock it. Kind of, it was, it was a, it's yeah, something it's you a technique was, uh, you would have to yeah, practice. Something I don't have with my right foot. You know, I actually surprised myself a bit. But uh, you know, it was a great cutback by Seamus, and uh, I think Johnny Johnny Walters got in the way of the defender and kind of like nestled in the back of the net. Yeah, and uh, it was a great start of the tournament. You know, and uh, obviously you know the Italy game. Where, um, you know we needed a win and uh, obviously Robbie's came up with that uh, header it was amazing yeah I wanted to talk to you about that goal because you know it's coming up to the eight, I think it was the 85th yeah, minute in and around that yeah. and you know, you know I was actually watching a bar in Thailand um, I was on holiday over the time but I'm just there watching it and you, you received the ball I think Robbie actually, Robbie gets it from Darren starts it from left back yeah. the ball comes over to you but what was running through your mind when you got that ball um, obviously, you know, uh, Robbie's passed Aidan McGeady and uh, Aidan's passed it to me and, um, you know, where Robbie's gone from, where to get in the box, an incredible run, especially in the 85th minute where, you know, you think your legs are getting tired and I just thought, you know, I've seen him run, run in the box, I said, just trying to hit hit it, hit a space where he's running to, and, uh, you know, he, he's got his head onto it and, uh, you know, celebrations, you know, after that goal was amazing, you know, the crowd were unbelievable that time, that night. And um, you know it was uh, probably one of the best moments in, in Irish football. Team. Absolutely, yeah. I, 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 my cousin was there, and he said he's never seen so many men cry. Yeah, like it tears was, of joy, was emotions. Yeah, I think Robbie started that off. You know, uh, Robbie got very emotional, and uh, rightly so. It, you know, a massive goal for 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 the for his country, and um, you know it's kind of uh, made everybody more or less cry in the in the stands. Yeah, and and you know, and there's memories now for life. How how do you feel as like? being part of that because you like without that ball in that goal doesn't happen you know what I mean how does that make you feel and obviously your goal against Sweden yeah obviously you know uh, I played an important part in the goal uh, you know but um, it was obviously a team effort in, in the end you know like 23 lads out there and um, it was amazing you know achievement for, for, for this country you know to get so far you know it was uh, the group of death but to get out of it and uh, you know and play France obviously you know we got a lot of um, we got three days recovery and they had a week to recover so you know I think that kind of played its part in the second half because we started that first half really well yeah and so we were one up and up, up, you know Robbie gets the penalty um, but then obviously the send off kind of kills us and then uh, you know, it, was, it was a losing battle from them yeah I mean and then you look at what they've gone on to do now since then like they won the World Cup and stuff like that's similar based to the, the the being of that squad basically have gone on to win the World Cup. So if you we, we did put it up to them, let's be honest. Yeah, of course, you know, we give them a good right goal for about sixty minutes and uh, you know, obviously I think the send off kind of kills in a way, you know, it's hard to get back into the game, especially in that heat and you know, uh, less stage recovery, you know, the travelling we had to do as well a few days beforehand. So um, you know, everything was against us on the day. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, obviously we're, we're at the stage now and kind of brings me to my next question is that um, you know, People seem to forget that like, Martin did bring those times. You know, the yeah. times of obviously you're involved in them games. Um, now, obviously, things kind of went a little bit sour in the last year. But that's kind of results. And now Mick has came in. But um, are you happy with the appointment of Mick McCarthy? Yeah, of course. Mick has a lot of experience. You know, he's managing the Premier League. Uh, you know, he's been with his switch, you know, and their teams are always up, up for the battle. It's hard to play against, you know. They'll get them well organised. And, uh, you know, he's been there, done it. So we know what it's all about. And obviously with Robbie uh, coming in, you know, he'd be great with communicating with the players and looking at like uh, that side of it. And, you know, to have one of the best football and strikers in, in the country, you know, uh, it's great to have him in, in part of the Irish team. I think that's kind of similar to the Euros. He kind of was kind of seemed like he was a bit like that figure in the Euros, was he? Like going yeah, he's just... obviously, you know, with the experience he has, you know, he's always talking to players, you know, getting them uh, going and all that. And, uh, you know, he's great at giving advice and um, he was great around the camp, you know. 
Yeah, I just think there's any better man to get a voice from, is there really? No, no, of course, you know, I mean, the history he has, the, you know, the record he has for Ireland, you know, probably one, he is a bit, one of the best footballers for Ireland yeah. to come out, you know. I don't see that record being broken for any time soon. No, no chance, no. Um, but would, would the appointment of Mick entice you to come out of uh, international ret- retirement? Uh, no, obviously, you know, wherever I came in, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I retired uh, last year, you know, and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, we get young players coming through now and, you uh, Start again, obviously, you know, with the draw up this weekend coming up. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, we get a, you know, a good group, and hopefully, you know, we can we can get to the Euros. You know, it's uh, obviously be two games at home, so it'd be great for the country to be there, and uh, kind of gives a lift from what's happened the last year. Yeah, I, I think that's quite admirable of you to, you know, kind of say, no, I'm gonna, you know, let other people come through because yeah. a lot. Of, there's a lot of footballers with bigger egos would be like if we qualify they jump with the chance to kind of get in the squad ahead of some youngster trying to make their way you know yeah. that type of way no of course not you know um, it's good now that um, Mick has took over and hopefully you know we can breach uh, young players coming through and get them ready and uh, I'm sure he'll do a great job absolutely and that just brings me to my last question um, would you ever return to the League of Ireland? I've been asked this by numerous people and numerous people on social media have asked us to ask you this whether it be as a player or as a coach if I was to go back, I would definitely go back to Shelburne because I've had uh, f- the fondest memories there. Uh, you know, it was a great time in my career. It's kind of a stepping stone for the next chapter in my career. And uh, you know, to play um, in the Champions League against obviously Deportivo, and you know, to win in the uh, three league medals, um, and it was only down the road for me. You know, I grew up watching them and stuff like that. So um, yeah, it was it definitely it was any time I come back, maybe one day I'll definitely be Shelburne. Yeah. Well, picture this. Shells are going for the league, it's the mid-season break, the transfer window's open, Shells come in, to get them to promotion, would that be a, a goal of yours? Um, obviously, you know, it, it depends what, t- what kind of uh, um, time it is and if, if it's the right move at the right time, yeah, I'll definitely, definitely be open to it, you know, um, obviously speak to Joe Casey quite a bit who's there at Shells and um, yeah, maybe one day, you never know. Okay, well, Bez, listen, thanks for your time and make sure... That. Uh, We'll make sure that everyone checks out your academy. And when does it just when does it launch? It launches in January. Uh, we're going to start over on the north side, and uh, you know, with uh, a Fairview Park with Belleville. So do you, do you have a date for this? Uh, yeah. For the for the launch date, basically for the academy. Yeah, we're going to start uh, January the fourteenth after the new year. So um, you know, we're going to look forward to that. Okay, perfect. And uh, lastly, guys, we are only eighty-one subscribers from four thousand. Please help us get there. Um, we want to get there before Christmas. It's Christmas in a couple of weeks, and you know we're getting guests on. We had Darren Randolph on a couple of weeks ago. Wes on this week. We're trying our best, so help us out as well, will you please? And uh, don't forget to follow Wes Hulman F- Football Academy. You'll see it on our Instagram, our Twitter, uh, and our Facebook. All the links will be there to their Instagram. Uh, so check it out. And uh, Wes, thank you again. Thanks very Absolutely much. Absolutely, that. love it. If you enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button now and if you never want to miss a video click the bell for alerts for all our other social media platforms check out this list below and as always thank you very much for watching Irish football remember, fan tv you know gary breen robbie keane